Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, BSU Linger. In this video, we are going to discuss about uh, field testing and mainly especially about a uh, standard penetration test. So let us see what is this field test. What is the importance of this field test when compared to laboratory test? So generally we are having, when you are doing tests on the soil sample, we are having two types of tests. Laboratory testing, another one is field test. So the test today we are going to discuss is a field test, penetration test, standard penetration test, which is a field test. That is why we are going to know about importance of the field test first. So field test. So what is this field test? These tests are also known as a in situ test. In situ test means uh, the, st the testing which was done at the site or at the particular location where we want to know the properties. If the tests were performed in that particular exact location and at a required depth, then those tests are called in situ test or field test. So what is the advantage we are having on performing this field test when compared to the laboratory test if you see firstly testing in the natural and undisturbed condition so the test what you are conducting in the field is completely testing in the natural condition means uh, the simulation we are not going to do simulate we are not going to simulate anything in in the field exact what was existing there for that condition we are going to perform the test the loads or the water content or the groundwater table whatever it may be we are not going to modify there at the exact condition we are going to perform the test so that is the first advantage we are going to test in the natural state natural state in which state it is available at the in that particular state we are going to perform the test second one undisturbed condition so if you extract a sample out of the soil that will be disturbed to minimum extent so uh, not maybe in 900% or it may be at least 10% it may be disturbed even though it is an undisturbed sample also it may be minimum of a disturbance will be there in the sample similarly the load stratification stratification effect the load which was acting on the different layers for example if you are taking a soil sample from this location uh, the load which was acting here because of the superimposed layers that will not be there when you are testing in the laboratory. So that cannot be required here. We are, we are going to test directly at this location with our apparatus. We are going to test the sample at a required depth. At required depth D, we are going to perform the test. So that is another advantage. In the undisturbed condition, we are going to perform the test, which is a natural condition. Second one, more reliable data. So the data, what we are going to get here, is more reliable. Why? Because uh, we are getting undisturbed condition. So in the undisturbed condition, if you are going to perform the test, the results also will be more reliable. Next one, more sortable in non cohesive soils. So when you are collecting sample in the case of uh, non cohesive soils for uh, laboratory testing, it is very difficult. Undisturbed samples cannot be, uh, undisturbed samples are uh, undisturbed uh, samples is uh, impossible to get in the case of non uh, non cohesive so uh, in case of non cohesive soils why because the stratification may get modified here when you are extracting the sample the state the natural state or the natural structure structure of the soil is going to get modified here so that is why uh, it is more suitable in case of non cohesive soils where the stratification is completely non cohesive in those cases uh, we cannot we can adopt this uh, field test so this is the basic advantage we are having while performing the field test so among these field tests we are having so many types the major important and uh, may, more prominently used one is the standard penetration test so now we are going to discuss about uh, the standard penetration test in a detailed manner so coming to standard penetration test so standard penetration test is performed in India on the basis of code IS2131-1981. The procedure prescribed in IS2131-1981 
we have to perform the test as per that procedure and if you see the setup of the standard penetration test it consists of a uh, firstly it consists of a cutting shoe or a driving shoe at the bottom and along with that we will be having a split tube which can be split longitudinally in order to collect in order to collect uh, uh, undisturbed samples from the borehole and uh, it, it will be this splitting tube or split tube will be connected to the drill rods of required depth and along with that there will be an anvil on top of the anvil we will be placing this uh, donut hammer the hammer what you are going to use here in this test is a donut hammer which is of around uh, 65 kgs standard weight of 65 kgs donut hammer will be placed and uh, the lift of this donut hammer should be around uh, 750 mm it should not be less than this and it should not be more than this 750 mm is the lift required here while performing the test and along with that a pulley tripod pulley assembly in order to lift the donut hammer vertically and effectively along with a rotating catch head in order to do the work effectively so this is the basic test setup and remember guys this test is performed in the borehole so at a required depth at which depth you have to perform for example at a depth of 2 meters after drilling the soil after drilling a borehole after a depth of 2 meters then only we are going to perform the test similarly at a 4 meters depth after, after drilling the borehole to a depth of 4 meters we will be performing the test similarly at a depth of 6 meters after excavating up to 6 meters a borehole is excavated and then we will be performing the test at the base of the borehole for example this is the borehole so at the base of the borehole we are going to perform the test so mainly if you see the procedure we are going to uh, we are going to place the we are going to first of all we are going to drill the borehole drill a borehole up to a required depth for example first when you are starting we will be going for a 2 meters depth up to 2 meters depth we will be doing 2 meters depth we will be doing a, a borehole excavation so after performing the borehole after doing after drilling the borehole we have to see that no soil fill is there at the bottom of this borehole no soil filling should be there it should be free from uh, fall, falling soil or uh, fall of soil or uh, free soil, excavated soil should not be there it should be completely removed from the bottom of the borehole then only we have to perform the test or else the results will not be reliable it, it will be misleading so that is uh, no fill should be there at the, no soil fill should be there at the bottom of the borehole and then we are going to perform that test so we are going to place the uh, assembly place the drill rod along with the split tube and uh, cutting shoe at the bottom of that borehole and we are going to give blows with the hammer with the donut hammer we are going to lift the donut hammer to a height of uh, 750 mm and we are going to release it so that it, the impact created by this donut hammer leads to penetration of the cutting shoe and the split tube into the ground so this way this uh, in this manner we are going to perform the test up to 450 mm how much depth of penetration is required means the test is performed up to a, a depth of 450 mm penetration so we are going to perform the test completely uh, into the ground until we achieve 450 mm penetration so meanwhile when we are doing this uh, uh, when we are giving the blows uh, with a uh, uh, hammer and uh, achieving this penetration to a 450 mm we will be recording the number of blows required to achieve this uh, number of uh, blows required to achieve this 450 mm penetration that also will be recorded so if you see 450 is divided into 3 parts 150 mm second one is another 150 mm and third one is another 150 mm so meanwhile so how much number of blows required here is n1 here is n2 here is n3 so total number of blows required for uh, doing a depth of penetration of 150 mm is n1 
नेक्स्ट वन फिफ्टी एम एम इज एन टू थर्ड वन फिफ्टी एम एम इज एन थ्री सो द फाइनल एन वैल्यू वाट वी आर गोइंग टू गेट आउट ऑफ दिस टेस्ट इज द सम ऑफ द लास्ट टू वै यू आर नॉट कंसिडरिंग दिस मीन दिस नंबर ऑफ ब्लोज रिक्वर्ड इयर फॉर फर्स्ट वन फिफ्टी एम एम पेंट्रेशन विल बी टेकन एज द सीटिंग लोड सीटिंग लोड दट इज वाई इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ seating load in order to attain perfect contact with the ground surface so that is why it will not be considered and so the n value will be the sum of the number of blows required to attain a penetration of last 300 mm so last 300 mm for the last 300 mm penetration for this depth how much number of blows is required n2 plus n3 will give you the total n value or that particular Depth. So similarly, we have done at a two meters depth. Similarly, at four meters depth, also after excavating the borehole, we'll be again uh, repeating the process. So we'll be... we'll be performing the test up to required depth, but where we have to stop the test. So is there any limitation for holding or halting the test? So if we see the conditions. we are having three basic conditions on basis of which we can stop the test at any depth if the if those conditions are there so firstly first one is if 150 blows are required for 150 mm penetration so whatever it may be it may be the first 150 mm or second 150 mm or third 150 mm when we are giving blows if 50 number of blows are required for attaining the 150 mm penetration then we have to stop the test so that is first condition second one if 100 blows are required for 300 mm penetration means uh, for first 300 or second 300 whatever it may be if 100 blows totally if 100 blows are required then also we can stop the test there why because it is offering more resistance similarly third one if 10 successive blows are required uh, after 10 successive blows also if no penetration if zero penetration is zero after giving 10 successive blows then also we can stop the test or we can say that non uh, uh, redressal or we can say that we can halt the test there is another important condition in case of a rock strata if the rock strata is available when we are doing the test how we have to perform means a 450 mm penetration may not be possible then what we are going to do is in case of rock strata number of blows required for first 300 mm penetration for 300 mm penetration how much number of blows is required instead of 450 mm we will be limiting our test to 300 mm and that 300 mm penetration number of blows required that will be taken as the n value here so these are the limitations or these are the Uh, halting conditions when you are performing the test so now coming to precautions that are to be adopted or that are to be considered when you are performing the standard penetration test so there are some precautions which are very useful or one has to remember when you are doing this test so firstly if you see the first one is the drop rod so the length of the drop rod or diameter of the drop rod should be as per the standard specifications and next one it should be perfectly vertical and no bend should be there along these uh, bend rods drop rods next one split spoon sampler coming to the sampler the sampler should be in a good condition no wear and tear no the wear and tear should be no it should be it should not be there it should be in good condition a wear and tear uh, sampler should not be used for the test Next one, drop hammer. Drop hammer is of weight sixty five kg. So the standard weight should be there as per the specifications. And the falling when the hammer is falling it should be vertical and should be free from uh, frictional uh, forces or friction should not be there on the drop hammer. Next height of fall. Coming to the height of fall, the height of fall should be around seven fifty mm. Seven fifty mm height of fall should be there. And next coming to the bore hole. the bore hole what we are going to excavate it should be free from filling material it should be free from filled material filled material should not be there in the bore hole means a uh, falling of material into the bore hole should be avoided next a uh, ground water table when there is a ground water table 
So when you are doing the test below the groundwater table, we have to fill the borehole with water which is above the groundwater table. Above the groundwater level, we have to fill the borehole with water. So that is why groundwater table is also very important. That is the major precaution. And next one, when you are performing this test for sand, especially as per the code, corrections should be adopted for the wower button pressure. So when we are going deeper and deeper, the wower button pressure will be more. If the depth is increasing, the wower button pressure acting on the soil element, pressure will be more. So that is why wower button pressure correction is to be done. Similarly, dye latency because of the vibratory impact, some kind of disturbance may be there, which leads to uh, liquefaction of the soil, means which leads to less recording of the N value. So that is why dye latency correction also should be adopted in case of a sandy soil. So these are the major precautions every site engineer has to adopt when you are performing this. So this is about a standard penetration test in a stepwise manner. Hope you understand well. Thank you.